got the class. This is an overview of uh, AS91610 conceptual design. Uh, this is an internal standard. It's worth six credits. Now, if you guys have done tech before and there was one until you will know all about it, uh, if you haven't, it is basically just a design only project. So you, you won't be making the prototype at the stage. You're just going to be designing it and then you'll be making it in term three. So what I'm saying to all of you out there is the cutoff date for um, getting into the workshop and building your, your goal carts for eVelocity will be term three. If we're not back into the workshop by the start of term three, we will have to do an alternative uh, standard. This, for the rest of this term, you guys need to complete this conceptual design standard. Um, and remember, it's worth six credits. We won't be going back over this in class if we do get back to school. You guys are really expected to do this at home now. So I'm gonna, gonna be putting together a series of videos to help um, talk you through how to do each um, page of the assessment. So starting with your teams here, you can see I'm in project two, eVelocity. Now there's two important files under assessment. The first one is the, the standard from NZQA itself. So open that up, just get familiar with what their requirements are to pass and to get merit and excellence. So you can see here, um, to pass it just says you need to develop a conceptual design considering fitness for purpose in the broadest sense. Merit is doing all of that, but your idea is refined. Excellence, your idea is justified. Now there is um, a checklist of things you need to do for achieved. You can see you need to do four of these things here to pass. For merit, you need to do these two additional things. And for excellence, you need to do this thing here. Now, if you don't understand some of the language, it's, some of it's quite wordy, make sure you read the definitions of number four, what a conceptual design is, and number five, that's talking about fitness for purpose in the broader sense. So what does broader sense mean? It's really all of that, um, the, um, all that info around the impact of technology on society. So think about, um, for you guys, it would be very relevant to discuss the difference between a combustion engine and an electric engine. So what are the differences in terms of performance, uh, in terms of impact on the environment? Um, if you can talk about that kind of thing, you're really meeting that broadest definition. So the broadest sense definition. So make sure you read through all of that stuff and become familiar with the language. Now, I'm going to be marked, the way I'll mark your work is this assessment schedule here. So this is what you need to really look at in detail. And I'll cover more of this in subsequent videos as we go along. But you can see this is straight from the standard. Here are the four things you need to do for achieved. Two extra for merit, one extra for excellence. So to get excellence, you need to meet all of the criteria on this page. So the first thing it says, you, you have to generate and evaluate design ideas informed or based on research, including the analysis of existing products and the context considerations, i.e. you need to develop a brief, which is like a guide, and then you need to um, find relevant research and then your concepts need to link back to your um, research. So there should be a clear link um, between your brief, your research and your concepts. They should all link together or tell a story. That's a requirement to achieve. Um, you also need to do these other things down here, which I'll talk about in subsequent videos. The other thing to look at in your team's folder is uh, I've created a student resources folder for you. So this is everything you'll need really to help you do the assessment. This conceptual design book is where you're going to put your evidence. So make sure you download a copy of this yourself. And as you're doing each page to get stakeholder feedback from me, the quickest way to do that is to use uh, the chats function and send me a copy of your work. I can write a comment and you can include that as part of your evidence for stakeholder feedback. The other thing to get familiar with is um, the EV categories. So that's what competitions you can enter in for eVelocity. Most of you should have really read that by now. It's been up here for several weeks. 
the uh, design process. This is some, this is how we're going to do this project. We're going to follow this in steps, and it's really important that you do follow a design process um, and become familiar with that to be successful. So you all, you know that we start with a design brief, set of rules or guidelines. We do some research, uh, and then we create some concepts develop that idea and we come to the final design, that's our design process. And then the last two parts is actually making and constructing our design. So for you guys to be successful for eVelocity this year, it's really important that you follow the design process. And I would say it's you're almost 100% guaranteed to have a, have a successful result if you do follow these things step by step. The process is there to um, really guide you and ensure that you're going to be successful. So become familiar with that if you haven't already. And the next thing is to look at is the um, social acceptability PowerPoint. Have a look through that. In a nutshell, social, accept social acceptability means um, is your design or idea acceptable to society in general? So for example, if you come up with an extreme example, if you designed um, your go-kart and you had like a swastika as a symbol on the go-kart, that would not be socially acceptable. Or if you had gang insignia on your go-kart, it would also not be uh, socially acceptable. So that's an extreme example, but you need to consider um, what is socially acceptable and know what that actually means. Have a look at that PowerPoint to get some understanding. Um, this document here is from, from one of the ARA tutors, uh, Steve Tomset. You could actually make Steve one of your expert stakeholders to you know, show him some of your ideas as you go along, get some feedback. Have a look through that again as well. It's just really talking about steering and design. And um, that's it for now. So the next video we're going to get straight into the brief.